Hey, good morning. Welcome to Salty Flag TV. Today, unfortunately, we're going to talk about, and I'm going to show you uh, some things after a hard strike with <clears throat> with my boat while scalloping up at Homosassa. Happens a lot. Um, it was a freak thing. I was in four foot of water coming back in on a known trail and hit something hard. Uh, messed up my lower unit, messed up my prop. Um, and as of right now, that's all that I know that I've messed up. I haven't been able to disassemble anything, but I've been given permission by the insurance company now to do that. So uh, on this episode, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to take the lower unit off a of DF250 uh, TX 2015 model. Uh, we're gonna inspect the drive shaft for any additional damage up top where the splines go into the gear reduction system. Uh, we're probably gonna remove the uh, water pump since I just put it on there maybe 10 hours ago. See if that's you know something I can salvage. I may have to put it on the new lower unit anyway. And then the last thing we're gonna do is um, we're gonna do a diagnostic run on the engine. I bought this uh, tool here. I got uh, ordered it online. It's from uh, a company where you can run diagnostic uh, basically you can do run diagnostic at home um, and get anything that a Suzuki dealer can get for the most part I'm sure there's some things that they hold back but but basically what it comes with is it comes with a connection cable that goes to your computer uh, USB and then there is a uh, so that's this cable right here and I think this was like 50 bucks or something so um, this is uh, uh, USB cable this would go into your computer and they also give you a six foot extension cable So that's kind of nice if you're working on the boat, you know, and you want to get away from the engine there So there's those two pieces and this piece right here actually plugs into this piece um, Get this out of here I haven't opened this up yet Goes into this piece right here like that Okay, and then depending on, this is for a wide range of uh, years and models, depending on which model you have uh, in your model, it would be one of these two connectors that you would connect to your engine, crank it up and run it. Um, and then this is the uh, uh, diagnostic system software they give you on this little card, which is kind of neat, never seen one of these before. And uh, you just flip this little uh, piece out right here. I can get it to do it. There we go. And then that goes into your computer and that loads the software. So uh, when you hook up to the, you know, the engine, it's able to read everything. So I haven't used this before, so I'm going to use that today. And uh, I'm going to bring you along for the ride on all this. And you know, what I'm going to check for is if there's any kind of codes, any kind of issues with the engine. Um, you know, it was a hard strike. I was running about 40 miles an hour when I hit it. So stay tuned and uh, we'll work on this together. Thanks. All right, right here at the engine. You can see I just had it repainted. Um, this engine's a 2015 DF250, but you could eat off the engine. I keep it very well maintained. Um, and what we got to do now is take the lower unit off so I can check if there's any more damage up on the drive line. So um, really, it's easy to take off. There's a there's a tube with a zip uh, with a zip tie on it that's right up here that you're going to have to disconnect with some needle nose pliers. You got three bolts on each side here. These are 14 millimeter. You've got your trim tab here. It's a 12 millimeter that you've got to remove this. And then there's another bolt inside of here. You're going to need a deep well socket for. And I think that's 15 millimeter. Um, and you got three more over here on this side. And then this whole lower unit will just drop out. I'm going to show you what that looks like in a few minutes. And uh, so uh, let's get started. So here's the bolt that's up in here. Uh, it goes up in here. I can take the trim tab off. It's actually a 17 millimeter head there. But you want to not want to forget that or you'll be very frustrated when you start taking these loose and uh, you can't get your uh, lower unit out. So here's kind of the thing that I do. Most of the time I take the prop off and I do that for a couple different reasons. Um, I check, make sure there's no line caught back here uh, between, uh, right back here between the, the seal uh, and the prop. Sometimes you can get some line caught. Um, plus, this, this makes it a lot heavier when you remove this by yourself. 
So, but in this case, as you can see, mine is warped. That shaft is warped. And it's still, this is an insurance claim, so I'm still working through that with them. And I've uh, been given approval to remove it to check for additional damage. But I don't want to disassemble anything uh, right now. So, leaving that on there. But what I normally do is I'll take and loosen all these first, and then I'll take them uh, out. And in this case, where the engine you know, is kind of at this angle, what I find easier is I'll take them all out except for this one on this side on the top. And then when I get ready to take that one out, I'll loosen it up, grab a hold of it. And as that one comes out, it just kind of slides out. Your drive shaft will slide out and so forth. There's also a little small tube. I'll show you that in a minute that you don't want to forget. You can easily get lost. That was it. And this is that piece I was telling you about that pops out and you might forget about it. It goes right here, but it has to go up in the housing first. So it can be a little tricky. So what you can do is put a little lithium grease on it where it'll stick. So when this goes up here, it's a spacer. That's all it is. It goes right there. So now I can uh, crank the engine up, run some diagnostic on it. And uh, I'm gonna check uh, these splines up here in a little bit and make sure everything's good. All right, I'm looking at the splines here, and if you can tell, I don't see any disfigurement in them at all. Like I said, I took a strike, I hit a rock or something at about 40 miles an hour. Um, hit the probably the bottom two inches of the skeg, which is probably the only thing that saved this engine. And higher um, tilt and trim system and all that but all this looks really good and as you can see part of the maintenance that I do is I keep all of this well greased uh, when I do my maintenance I, I grease the entire drive shaft um, you know this motor is seven years old and it looks like you know basically brand new um, and it runs only in salt water so you want to have something you got to maintain it and it takes it takes work and so being able to work on it yourself is is good this is that tube that i was telling you about that comes down and it goes on right there and i always put a new zip tie on there whenever i pull it because it just pops off there's your shifter linkage and uh when i get it in the garage i'll pull the water pump out check all that in there and just make sure everything's good all right i got the uh laptop hooked up here with the uh suzuki diagnostic software Took a little bit to figure this out, but I got it. Um, basically, the problem was finding this connector right here and uh, making sure that it worked. And I saw another video uh, where somebody had found the diagnostic uh, connector right here. It's just a plug. And that's what they tell you to use. When I plugged it in, I got no connectivity, just like the guy, the other guy I used to video said. So I disconnected the actual harness from the engine. Same wires, if you look. Um, where are they at? Come here. If you look, they're the, uh, the same wires right here. Okay. So I disconnected that and boom, got it. And what I was checking for is after I hit the rock, uh, was there any, um, we can't, you know, any diagnostic stuff going on. So here I'm showing no failures. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to disconnect everything. Um, and, um, run the engine and and then see if there's any anything going on now so just want to take a look at the engine here this is a 2015 and uh it only runs in salt water and i'm not bragging or anything i'm just saying that uh i use um uh, a spray lubricant i think it's r47 or something you can also use seafoam deep creep and I spray this engine down a couple of times a year, the entire engine. The is lubricant is 656. Uh, that engine looks after being in salt water for seven years. So the engine's got 400 hours on it. I'll be back. All right, uh, last thing we're gonna do here is I'm gonna show you this lower unit and um, pull the water pump out of it. And I'm probably gonna have to use that on the next uh, lower unit that I get. 
So we'll get right to that. So basically to pull this water pump out and get the housing, I'm just gonna remove these four bolts right there. Um, and that will come straight off of there. So let me get to that and I'll show you what that looks like. Yeah, as you can see, I'm just um, removing this with a 12 millimeter. Comes right out. I haven't mentioned it earlier, but uh, typically all of the screws that I use are when I put these bolts back in. Um, generally, these are stainless going into aluminum. And uh, unlike metals, like to decay faster, rust faster. So I always use a little bit of lithium grease. There's probably um, manufacturer recommended grease, but lithium grease seem, seem, seems to work just fine. Um, white lithium grease right there. All right, so I got the four bolts out. I'm just gonna pull this up here. It'll generally just come out. There we go. Comes off of there. I think this is where I gotta do this together. This slides up the housing like that. Be careful, there is a um, rubber gasket right here. I plan on reusing this because I just put it in there, so I'm going to make sure I take care of that. This is the actual cup. Slide that right off. And you can see the water pumps right here. Let me uh, see if I can get this out. Set this here for a second. All right, I got it out. Now, you see this one's been in there about 10 hours, and it's already getting a little bit of memory. And, and that's why you really change these. Um, whether it's a year or 100 hours, it's not so much that it, they, they necessarily wear out. Um, it's the memory. And as they sit in there longer, because they're, they're under pressure the whole time, they get memory like this. And um, if you look at this, this hole is not centered in this cup. The reason for that is, is that as the impeller slides around off center, it compresses um, on one side more than the other. And that's where you get your water pressure from. So as this gets more memory, as it goes by that compressed area, it doesn't pump as good. So that's why you should always change these about um, once a year, no matter if it's 100 hours or not. Here's the wear plate. And uh, I'll get this off here in a second. I got to get that key out right there. Once I get that key out, I'll get this wear plate off and basically the disassembly will be complete. All right, I got this off and you can see that the back side of the gasket tore. I'm gonna get a new gasket for it, no big deal. Because um, I normally just recommend you put a little silicone on this back side right here uh, when you put this down. So that's it. Things apart. Now I'm just waiting on uh, Geico to uh, get the claim finished so I can get the new unit put on the boat. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. All right. Well, um, I got everything completely disassembled. I appreciate you watching. Again, um, this is just part of boating, you know been boating since uh, 1985 and I've never um, you know, had this kind of incident so end of, end of family vacation coming back in just hit something happens um, thank goodness I got insurance so um, unfortunately um, you know I had to get towed back in which I had insurance for that too so it's all good and we'll get it back together and um, appreciate you guys watching thanks